In this video, I want to show you how you can create a visual that shows the difference between two values. So something like this, where it shows you the difference between two values between one period to another, if it's increasing or decreasing, but also let you use measures to adjust how these visuals are filtered to show either what is not matching versus what is matching, or all of them, including what is matching or not matching. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So I recently encountered this requirement where I needed to show the difference in values from one period to another. So as I showed you from the very beginning, let me just bring it back again. So we basically have two different set of prices here for the products that we have. We have the 2023 and 2024. And what the clients wanted to do is to track how that value changes over time. Uh, if it's increasing or decreasing. Now, they want to be able to have the ability to see what has changed, but they also wanted the ability to be able to choose what they want to see and export from these tables. Maybe they just want to see what is matching or what is not matching or basically all of them. So this is where this idea sort of spawned from. Now, while adding the colors and the icons are not too much of a challenge, the solution of being able to filter a table based on some kind of custom filters or basically based on a measure is not as straightforward as you might think. So today I wanted to cover all of that so that you can try to kind of replicate it for yourself. And I'm going to open up this report here, which I have created without any of the kind of solutions that we have looked at so far. So it's basically the list of products along with their prices in 2023 and 2024 split into tables. In the model itself, you will notice that is basically a simple diagram with just the products being the kind of unique factor in these prices. Uh, it's a one-to-many relationship like this. And in these tables themselves, it's fairly simple. It's just a list of products here. And what you'll notice is in the prices, it's just a bunch or a list of prices for each of these products using product ID as their kind of matching column. So if we bring this all into one, so let's bring in the product name, for example, let's bring it into a table. And then let's bring in the unit price for 2023 and 2024. Just gonna name them appropriately so we can distinguish them. So just looking at this table, it's very hard to distinguish what has changed or what is not matching. So we're gonna use a bit of DAX measure to try and distinguish this. So I'm gonna go to, I've created the calculations uh, measures table here that we're gonna use, which I typically recommend to organize your measures to create one. It's just an empty table. So we're going to create the new measure in this, and we're simply going to name this one mismatch. Now we're going to do an if statement, which is a very if simple if statement, which just says if the unit price in 2023 is not equals to the unit price in 2024, we want to give it a one, else we want to give it a zero. So if we're bringing it into our table here, we'll see that these are zeros. Now, if we bring up the filter pane here and we use the measure to filter this. So if we say, if it's one, there we go. So very simple like that. You can easily see what or which products have changed their prices between 2023 and 2024. Now that's the first step. We are now able to determine which products have changed their values, but you'll notice that they, the change is a little bit different. So you have some products that have increased in price and you have some products that have decreased in price and we wanna be able to distinguish between the two. So how do we do that? So we're actually gonna create another measure to create those colors or icons, and which is actually gonna be 
also pretty simple. So I'm just going to call this one mismatch color. And here we're going to use a switch statement, which is basically an easier way to uh, to create like concatenated if statements, right? So we're going to use true here. And we're going to say if the unit price of 2023 is greater than the unit price of 2024, we want this color to be red. Else, I just need to copy this. Okay. And we're going to adjust this one if it's greater than, sorry, less than, then we're going to make it green. Else, we're going to make it white. So this basically is meant to determine the either the font color or just something that we can use as a field value later to adjust the colors based on the values in here. So now we can bring those mismatched colors in here. And now we can see the colors or what is assigned to those products, which again is fairly standard. So we know from these, if they are increasing or decreasing, but that's not actually how we want to use it because we want to use the properties to adjust the color of these tables based on those colors. So what we're going to do is adjust the cell elements here. We're going to start with the background color. So we're going to go to the 2024 which is what we want, where we want to have the background color changing in. I'm going to click conditional formatting. We're going to choose the mismatch color measure. Actually, we need to choose field. We need to choose rules first, and then we need to choose mismatch color. So now it lets us adjust the colors based on the text. Now we could just use the colors that are in them. But, and that's probably more efficient, but uh, I, I'm too lazy to, to adjust it. So we're just going to start with like if it's red, if it's green, and then if it's white. So if the text is red, if the text is green, oops, then if the text is white. So as you can see, it's giving us the colors that we want. And now from here, you can even add other things using the same kind of method to add things like icons. So I've added, you know, the icons earlier, the, the arrows, which uh, could help too. Uh, and it does help kind of identifying not just by color, but also by icon for those of you guys that are colorblind. This, this is very helpful. So I'm going to choose mismatch color. We're going to leave it to the left, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to change the icon to by going up, by going down, or no icon. So no icon will be white. This is red, and this is green. Very simple. So now that that's done, now we can see what has changed between these two periods and how they've changed if they've increased or decreased. We want to give the users the ability to filter out what they want to see. Maybe they want to see what's changed or what's not changed or everything, like using those filters that we had before. Now, we can not simply use the measure as a kind of filter or a slicer in visuals because they're typically not use that way. So we're going to have to use some field parameters or some temporary tables so that we can use and adjust the value of the measures based off of that. So I hope that's not too confusing. We're going to start with, I'm just going to hide this first of all. So what we're going to do is we're going to create that slicer that the user will be able to select. 
Um, so what we're, we're going to do is going to go to modeling. We're going to create a new table here. And I'm going to name this one selection. And we're going to use the curly brackets to create a basically a one column table with some values here. We're going to add some strings here. So all matching and then mismatching. Okay. So what it does is it creates as a table. And if I preview how that table looks like, it's basically just a table like this with three values. And the reason for that is as a table, you can now use that value as a slicer visual. So if we choose the slicer visual here, there we go. But if you try to use mismatch, you'll see that Power BI won't let you because it's a measure. So we're just simply going to use this table as a slicer, but actually the values that you select here will adjust what the measure actually shows. So we're going to go and adjust the slicer settings. I'm just going to make this a tile like how we had done the, the beginning. So I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller and put it on top of this table. And as you can see, you can select, but it's not really hooked up to anything yet. So let's, let's make this happen. So let's go to the mismatch measure that we have created here. I'm just going to copy everything that we have worked on so far, and we're going to swap it out basically with another uh, switch statement. So we're going to start with a switch statement here. And here, instead of true, we're going to use this function called selected value, which basically tries to determine what is selected from our uh, tile slicer. So if the selection is all, we want all the values in this measure to be one. So basically just select everything regardless. If we, if they have selected matching, we want to create a check here. So we want to do an if statement. So if the sum of the prices is not equals to, or actually because it's matching, it needs to be equals to, we want this to be one, else it's zero. And then lastly, if we want, if we do mismatching, we do an if statement. If it's, if it's not matching, then it's one and zero. So the reason why we're doing this is we want the values in our tables to be one, depending on what they have selected. And one means to show and zero means to not show. And the reason for that is because we have the mismatching filter on the filter pane that always filters out values that are just one. So if it's one to show it, but this measure changes those values based on the selection of the slicer. So if we hit enter now, you'll notice, well, let's, let's just see to make sure that it works. First of all, um, what we have set up. So it's showing mismatching because we have it selected. What drives the table is based off of this filter pane with, where it always shows rows that are one. So now what happens is if you select matching, there we go. It's only showing rows that are matching because of this rule that we have in this. So it's this line, line four. So it changes everything to zero or it changed everything to one, except the ones that are not matching. So I hope that, I hope that makes sense. And, and yeah, that's, that's really it. So you don't necessarily need to have the columns here as well on the table because we are just using them for kind of background conditional formatting purposes. So you can simply just remove them and there we go. So you have basically a table data with just the data that is ready for exporting and is affected by slicers. Easy. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to use slicers like this to adjust and filter your tables based on measures and your calculations. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. 
give it a dislike. If you didn't, something to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.